So now the Divine Twin Souls have consciously understood and accepted their destiny and covenant with God Consciousness, they are now manifest onto the material plane to begin their journey throughout the cycle of incarnations between both the physical and ethereal planes. The tarot card equivalent to the transformational emergence onto the material plane of the male and female Divine Twin Souls is the Lover's Card, which is card number six. However, when we look to the Fibonacci sequence and Golden Mean Spiral, we can see it is a number eight in the sequence. If we add all the previous numbers in the Fibonacci sequence up until this number, we get 20. And if we look to the ancient Egyptian number key, we can see that 8 and 20 are situated at the heart chakra. Although there is an obvious connection to the name of this card, the lovers and the heart, if we look to the Kabbalah tree of life, the sephira connected to the heart chakra is Tifereth, which is number 6. So this confirms again that the number six and the lover's card are connected to the heart and the numbers of the heart chakra are eight and twenty. And if we look at the pathways from for Chesed, the Empress, through the heart, Tifereth, to number eight, Hod, we see that the path of the hand, which symbolizes action, is twenty. And the path of the eye, which is vision, is 26, which equates to 8. The number 6 is symbolic of the divine twin souls in their physical form. And the number 8 is referring to their immortal soul. And this immortality is directly connected to the weight of the heart. The divine is also connected to them at the heart. And we see this represented by the angel that stands between them. And this is once again showing a third conscious force between God consciousness and the divine twin souls. The number 20 represents our connection from our heart to the sun and the divine. And we see a connection to the number 20 and both the sun and the divine in this verse from Exodus 28. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath is a Sunday and a day of rest because it was supposed to be a day we remembered our connection to the sun and the divine through our hearts. Once again, it seems the religious establishment sought to implement themselves into this role also and thus making it a day of singing songs of praise to some overweight priest who was happy to take your money as he passed around his plate. It is also interesting to note that when God speaks his commandments, he starts at Exodus verse 21. And God spake all these words, saying, This verse is showing us that God speaks through the heart. And the heart of a fetus also beats for the first time on the 20th day of gestation. The angel stands in front of the sun in full illumination, not only showing a connection to the divine with the purple robes, but also that the divine is very much present and supporting them in every way when they are first manifest at the beginning of the cycle. And this is represented in the verse in Genesis 2.15 And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. When you add the verse 1 and 5 together, you get 6, as well as representing the twin souls in the number 2. At this time, they are in harmony and full consciousness and have the gift of expression and knowledge shown by the symbols of the serpent and the apples on this card, for we see that the divine female twin soul is in front of the tree and has access to this knowledge, and the expression of this knowledge is symbolized by the snake. Because we see the snake referenced to speech and expression, 
in both the Kabbalah tree of life and scripture. On the tree of life, the throat chakra is located at the path of the serpent. And in scripture, the serpent speaks to them about eating the divine fruit of knowledge in Genesis 3, 5. For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 3 and 5 equals 8, the immortal soul. And the number 8 is also connected to the heart chakra. So now we understand that the serpent and tree of apples are symbolic for the expressed intellect of the female twin soul. However, the divine male twin soul has his divine knowledge represented by the tree with the 12 flames. The fires are representing his divinity illuminated within him as they are at the height of consciousness and have full access to their divinity. However, in the background, we can see a steep mountain has been depicted. This is to denote that this will not be a continuous cycle of never-ending planes, but one of changes. The mountain is represented in a phallic way, as it is the male that will forget his divinity first, and force Lilith from the garden, as they once again descend in consciousness throughout this cycle. When consciousness leaves them and they forget their divinity, they are no longer welcome in the garden. And we see this in Genesis 3.24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Two and four equals six and three is the trinity. The cherubim guarding the way of the tree of life is symbolic for man descending into lower consciousness and our worthiness of divine knowledge leaves us and we are denied of it. As we saw previously on the Kabbalah tree of life, the number six lovers card equates to the sephira number six called Tifereth. This sephira is connected to the heart chakra and in the Hindu tradition, this is known as the Anahata Chakra. Its symbol is often shown as a green lotus with 12 flower petals. And in the middle of the lotus is a hexagram, which also represents the number six. This hexagram is symbolic for the upper ethereal forces and the lower energetic forces of the earthly plane merging within the heart. As discussed in previous videos, the energy point of the heart is the only energy center in our ethereal body that is anchored in both the physical and ethereal planes. This is where our lower three chakras and higher three chakras meet, and it is not surprising that the name of this chakra is equated to a sound known as the Anahata Nada, the unmade sound. This is a sound not made in the realms of where we dwell. It is the unknown sound of the universe, the primal sound of energy itself. Our ethereal heart is the merging point or vortex of the higher and lower realms. The Hindu called this hexagram within this chakra a shatkona. It is a symbol used in Hindu yantra that represents the union of Purusha, the supreme being symbolic of the ethereal and divine forces, and Prakriti, which is symbolic of Mother Nature and the causal matter influenced by the ethereal and upper realms. In Tibetan Buddhism, the heart wheel is circular, white, and has eight petals or channels that reach downwards. It is said these channels divide into three, the mind wheel, speech wheel, and body wheel. They then go to the 24 places in the body. They then divide into three again and then into 1,000, producing 72,000 channels known as the nadi, which spread out throughout the whole body. It is interesting in these numbers from Tibetan Buddhism that we see a connection to the number eight. The channels from the heart are said to go into 24 places, two and four are six, and if we divide it 24 by the Trinity, we get eight. So we are seeing a connection 
to the number 6 and 8 once again. Therefore, it is not surprising that on the Kabbalah tree of life that the middle sephira, Tifereth, also represents the center where the upper and lower forces meet. Kabbalists say that Tifereth is somewhat of a converting sephira between form, Yesod, and the ethereal forces of Kitha. Tifereth is also related to the sun and the astrological sign of Leo, and in Christian Kabbalah, Tifereth is especially associated with Jesus, who they call God the Son, as opposed to Kitha, who is referred to as God the Father. They say this is because in Tifereth, the divine force sacrifices itself, transmuting into the forces of energy and matter, in order that creation might come to be. They also say that it is this sephira where God becomes a mortal man. So what these Kabbalists are clearly showing is how they are relating these energies that are manifesting our creation from the projected mental universe, God consciousness, through the sun onto the material plane. And as Hermetics shows us, with the correspondence of the mental, spiritual and physical planes, there are no clearly defined boundaries and all the planes merge into one another. The heart is where your ethereal and foundational forces merge and you are anchored onto this plane. And the sun is the energetic connection that anchors the soul here by the heart, projected through God's mind. However, as the tree of life and Eastern philosophies show, you must pass into the ethereal heart and relinquish your bondage to the physical plane to move up into the ethereal and more conscious energy points within you. There is a Norse goddess known as Sin, and she was known as the one who guarded the gates and refused entry to those who were not deemed worthy. In chapter 35 of the Prose Edda book, Sin is listed as 11th of 16 Aesjur. It is said that she guards the doors of the hall and shuts them against those who are not to enter. Her name is also connected to a saying where a denial, sin, is made when one says no. So we can see in the Norse mythology it is the goddess Sin who guards the doors to the halls or path of Gimel. For it is when we work against the heart, we are creating sin or weight in our heart. And if we add the numbers of the chapter together, 3 and 5, it equals 8. In Sufism, the Qualb is called the heart of a mystic which is caught between the downward pull of the lower nafs and the upward pull of the spirit of Allah, and thus can be blackened by sin. So once again, we see the heart connected to the area of upper and lower forces. This is the end of part one of number seven in the Mystery Teachings series.